until I got to be about, say, 13, 14. It was baseball for me. I used to dream about playing professional baseball. And then I used to think, hey, I know I can't do this because they won't even let the white boys play with the black boys, you know. And the black boys not even playing, so I know I'm not going to make it there. <laughs> so, you know, that I kept playing and playing. I says, one day I'm going to play baseball. Because that's all we had to do, Renee. But now, how is it, I mean, even in, in, in the South, in the rural areas of the South, and whatever, whatever I, don't, I didn't hear a lot of stories from my mother about little girls being allowed to play baseball <laughs> with the boys. Well. How did that happen? <laughs> I was the only little girl there. And, and, and I played with the boys. Now, these were all on your kids who were yeah, like neighboring? Yeah, that's close by, you know. And there were a few close, girls close by my age. Let me see, Mary Alice Qualls and Liz May Qualls and them. But they didn't like baseball, and I did. So and by us having the large field, we had enough room for baseball field. And, and no, you're not a big one, you know, but we had enough room and all the little fellas would gather, you know, with my uncle and everything. And this when they played, I played. And I got mad if I didn't play. And I tell my grandma, and my grandma made him let me play. So, hey, that's all I did. <laughs> yeah. Now, well, where did that, I mean, t today, uh, you know, there's a lot of discussion about how uh, young black kids don't, aren't interested in baseball and don't have that love of baseball. How was it that in those days, in that, in rural areas like that, and in urban areas also, there were so many black kids who loved baseball? It was nothing else to do. We didn't have basketball. We didn't have football. We didn't have tennis. We didn't have that. All we knew was baseball. And this is what we did, because we made our own baseballs. How did you do that? With a rock, some twine, and some masculine tape. Run that past me. <laughs> <laughs> Put a stone. <laughs> and you wrap it with twine. You know that heavy mm -hmm. twine? Right. And you wrap it, and you wrap it to a size of a baseball, and then you tape it with the heavy masculine tape, and then it would fly. Really, this is this this is what we did, because um, you didn't you couldn't buy them, so you made them, and, and and just like jacks and things that the kids are doing here now and things, we did those with little white rocks. Way back, so you know they 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 didn't teach us anything. We knew already, but we just did it did it in a different way and with different utensils, I'll put it that way. How did you learn to be so accurate with your pitching? <laughs> well, I used to knock birds off the fence. Yeah, I, I used to do that, and uh, quite often. You, uh, what, <laughs> what uh, just any kind of bird that landed? And anyone that was on the fence. And you'd yeah. wait in position and you'd yeah, practice. Yeah, yeah, and them I off. used to use a slingshot also. And, and, and this is how I learned to do this. And um, it was fun to me. And, it, you know, anything I enjoyed, I enjoyed doing. And I'd, I'd knock the birds off the fence. And um, I learned to throw pretty hard like that. Because birds would fly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>